Hello everybody, it's Vinyl Rich here. Well, Vinyl Finds, I don't really remember what number. But before I show my Vinyl Finds, I uh, got some New Year's VCLT from Ron Haggerty, the Metal Ron. And I'm gonna open that up with my trusty Swiss Army knife. This thing works fantastic. <laughs> well, we got a few little things in here. Let me be careful. Got a note here. Well, let's see what we got here first. 35 cents. Miniature album collection, bubblegum record. I think these came out in the 80s. I don't really remember them. I got a ABBA, which is very cool. And Robert Palmer. Very cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I hope that gun's still good. Got a little card here from Monster Music and Movies in Charleston, South Carolina. I think that's where the Metal Theologian resides, if I remember right. And it's got a note here. Hey man, as soon as I put this on, I knew it was for you. Enjoy, if you don't already have it. Well, I can tell by the cover I don't already have it. And I've never heard this. David Peel on the Lower East Side, The American Revolution. This is the dude that uh, John Lennon discovered on the streets of uh, New York City. I'm sure I'm going to like this. I know, uh, I, I've, I've never really heard this guy. I just know of him. So thank you very much, man. This is cool. And it's in this Electra. I don't think this is the... Yeah, it is an Electra. It's in this... Nice Electra sleeve. And it's on the red Electra label. Very cool, man. I have not heard this. I have no idea. I really don't have an idea what it sounds like. I kind of do. I know, uh, I think John Lennon ran across this guy playing in the streets of New York City. That's about all I know. Okay, uh, I have a, now I'm going to show my vinyl finds. Thank you, Ron. Ron Haggerty, Metal Ron, was his original name. I don't know why he changed it. I don't know why all these guys change their channel names, but they do. Uh, now I'm going to show my vinyl finds. I haven't made one of these in close to three weeks. These first two, I would consider grails, if you want to call them that. Uh, veterans of the VC or people that are into the 60s psych, they'll know these first two albums. They're not common albums, though. But they're not, like, rare, uh, like some of the shit some people show. But, uh, for me, I wouldn't have bought these albums if it wasn't for the VC. Um, I may have, based on the covers, though. They're pretty damn cool. And this first one is, uh, Art. Supernatural fairy tales. I, uh, earwax, earwax, earhead, uh, 66 or ear, earhead, god dang. I think it's earhead 66 up in the Seattle Pacific Northeast. He showed this very album on Island and he said it was a second press. And I asked him, how do you know this is a second press? And he said, by the label, this pink uh, island label, my wife and kids are making a hell of a lot of noise over there. I hope it doesn't ruin the video. But uh, he said, you can tell this is a second press by the this pink island label. And uh, I had been looking at this album in the store for a while, he had it up on the wall, and I just 
I the I had never seen it before, but the album cover is so striking. And uh, I listened to it online. I go, man, this is pretty powerful stuff. It's uh, it's not wimpy psychedelic. It's pretty rocking actually. And uh, apparently, this band Art became Spooky Tooth. And uh, I, see now, Spooky Tooth is one of those album or one of those bands that I I don't really know. I mean, there's so many bands you you can't know them all. I mean, I don't have time. But uh, this album cover really caught my eye, and uh, the the guy he had a, a, a sticker on it and said uh, original press or something like that. So once I found out it was a second press, I thought you know I'm gonna go back to the store and you know tell the guy hey uh, you want to drop a little off of that price it's a second press and you know I, I really want to get it though and when I went to see this album or to you know possibly pick it up he had this one up on the wall the story of Simon Simopath by Nirvana now I had heard of this album when Nirvana came out in the 90s I had heard I guess then that there was a 60s Nirvana I had never, I didn't know, had no idea what they sounded like, and when I saw this record, I didn't have any idea of what they sounded like. But I, I saw it and I go, dang. So I approached the guy, and I said, you know what, this is a second pressing here, and I would like to get this one. Can I, you know, I mean, look at these two records, man. They, these two records belong together. I mean, look at that. You know what I mean? I mean, they're they're not exactly alike, but the same color schemes. Well, I don't know. They're they're just when I saw them both up on the wall, I go, man, those both got to come home with me. But anyways, this album here, it's really rock, and the guy has a great voice. And I'm gonna check out Spooky Tooth, starting with their first album, and just see what they sound like. They can't be all bad, I tell you that much. Um, the second song in here, it's What's That Sound? And it said it's written by Mills, but it it's, sounds like the Stephen Steele song that he wrote when he was in the Buffalo Springfield. So I don't know. I haven't really checked into that. But this is a cool... It's on uh, YouTube. Art, Supernatural Fairy Tales. Really Really great find for me. And I would call it a grill. And so I would call this one a grill also. The original Nirvana from the 60s. Um, I, and this one is, that is a second, this is a second press UK. This is a, a US pressing on Bell Records. And I had no idea what this band sounded like. So, it was a blind buy. I do that quite often. <coughs> and uh, it, it didn't sound like what I thought it was going to sound like. It's very whimsical, uh, fairy tale ish, keyboard driven, psych. The songs are like, it's broke, I guess, is what they call it. But the songs are just really whimsical. And the guy's voice is very. Uh, I don't know. It's it's this guy here has a masculine, very powerful voice. This guy's la 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 kind of voice. So I wasn't sure about this man, but the songs are really well written songs. So I played it again. I played it again, and I played it again, and man, this album grew on me. It is fantastic. And since picking this up, I didn't mention, I bought both of these before Christmas. But I didn't want to, I, my last Final Finds was Christmas stuff, and I didn't want to show these with that. But since buying this, I found another one of their albums on at a different record store. But they want too much for it. They want more than what I paid for this, surely. And almost, almost what I paid for both of these. And I, I don't know. But this is really cool stuff, man. I, it's not. 
I something that I like the guitar driven psych best. But dang, this could change my mind and hell, who knows? I might end up getting that uh Oracle and Odyssey by the zombies, you know? That might grow on me. Who would ever thought that? But yeah, this is cool. American press. I don't know which one. It's it's definitely early shit. And when I bought those two, I did buy this one here. Peggy Lipton. I guess it's a self-titled. It's on Ode Records. Nice gatefold. Um, <coughs> a lot of people might not know who Peggy Lipton is. Anybody in my generation does. She was on. She's known mostly for being on a TV show called The Mod Squad. You know, I was a kid when that came out. I I dug it. Um, who knew that maybe four years later I would have called the Mod Squad the Mod Squad the Narc Squad, but you know I I, I liked the show when I was young, and I had no idea what this sounded like. Another blind buy. So why did I buy it? Dang, look at that cover, dude. I I just had to buy that album. I mean. Dick for brains, dick for brains. Why do I got dick for brains? But man, that, she's beautiful. Uh, it kind of sounds like Mamas and the Papas, Fifth Dimension type music. Not something that I, it, I don't dislike, but it's not something I seek out. So it's not bad at all. Better than what I expected, kind of. But it's not great. I'll keep it. Very cool. Now these next, I, those first three albums I bought all together, and these next three albums I bought, I bought these all three last, maybe two weeks ago, something like that. The first one is uh, Captain Beefheart, Moonbeams, Blue Jeans and Moonbeams. Now this one came out after Unconditionally Guaranteed. Back in the 70s, Unconditionally Guaranteed was the last Captain Beefheart album that I bought. I didn't like that album. It starts out really great, but it's I didn't I didn't care for it. I mean, I'll I'm going to get it when I see it for a good price. <coughs> so I wasn't really expecting much from this. But dang, this is a really this is a much better album. It is kind of mainstreamish, but big deal, you know? It, it's still great songs. And uh, I'm really glad I got it, man. It's This is a really good Captain Beefheart album. It's not not bad at all, dude. And it's on uh, Mercury, Blue Jeans, and Moonbeans. Really good. I'm glad I got that thing. Now this next one, I would call this a grail too. Totally different camp than those first two 60s psych albums. But this is the Anti-Nowhere League. Uh, British punk band from 82 era. Um, Anti-Nowhere League. We are the league. Um, maybe this is common in Great Britain or UK or Europe. I don't know. This is not really all that common in the US. This is a fantastic album. Uh, this guy here, Animal. His, <laughs> his vocals are not... Uh, PC correct, you know, it, and I love it, dude. It's great. He's just a raunchy, I'm an animal. That's one of his songs, you know. He talks about, uh, just, it's pretty crazy. I hate people. Just, nowhere man. We're the league. It's just a great oi punk band. Very accessible sounding stuff to you know the later standards of punk, but uh, the word the words are not a uh, radio friendly. I'll tell you that much. And it's I I just love that '80s oi sound. And got this label, Anti Nowhere League, and on this side you got the song listing and what not. Fantastic for me. That's a grill. And the third album I picked up was 
Jimi Hendrix, Cry of Love. This was his first album that he passed away, uh, after he passed away. I bought this album when it came out. No longer had it. And uh, it's a really good album. It's uh, it's not as good as the first three, but it's pretty darn good. Has Freedom, Easy Rider, Angel, Belly Button Window. It's just a good album. Nightbird Flying. It's got some really cool tracks. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm happy to and uh, have this back in my collection and a fantastic gatefold. And it's a really cool cover, drawn and pubic hairs. I don't know if you can see that, but pretty cool shit. And uh, all these, so far, all this vinyl is in. I think all this, all this vinyl is in excellent shape. Man, I, I'm, I'm getting uh, allergies. It started yesterday, and it's on the reprise. Some people say it's supposed to be reprise. Well, they didn't spell it that way. Reprise for me. This next one here, I got. And I picked this up. Who's this guy? Sleepy John Estes. And it's called Electric Sheep. <laughs> Electric Sleep. <coughs> I never heard this guy before. But it's got Sunny, Sunny Land Slam. Jimmy Fast Fingers Dawkins. And it's on Delmark. I, those three things never didn't mean nothing to me. But Tales in the Crates showed some albums on Delmark. He recommended them. And he might have shown this guy. I don't remember. Dead Wax 66 could have shown some albums on Delmark also. But yeah, this is pretty cool. I This guy, I believe he was from the that Mississippi strain. That folk, acoustic, real gritty. This is an electric album. Recorded in the 60s, mid-60s, I believe. And it's not a real polish, though, which is cool, which is fine by me. Uh, it, it, it sounds like they just got all these guys together and they jammed one day in the studio or one evening in the studio and this is what you got. Um, it's pretty cool. The guy's voice is different. Let's put it that way. And this is the Delmark label. Very cool. My first Delmark, and uh, I'll, I'll seek some more out. This next one is another Grail. It's Fang Land Shark. This is a band that I believe came out of Berkeley. I know it was the Bay Area. Um, this is a used album that's in fantastic shape. If they reissue this, I don't think I would buy it. Mainly because of this singer, this, this band is uh, infamous now. Because this guy here, he was arrested. Right here's another picture. For uh, murdering his girlfriend. He got a real light sentence. You know how it is up there in uh, the Bay Area. You can darn well get rid of murder, get rid of, get away with murder up there. And, uh, and it, it sucks. But, uh, this is a used album, so the proceeds went to the record store company. And it's a good album. Um, they got one song. What is it? The Money Will Roll Right In. Fantastic song. Check that out on, uh. On YouTube. I highly recommend it. Fang. The money will roll right in. Really. Real, really catchy song. I mean. A lot of people don't like punk. But they were writing. In my opinion. Some of the best. Catchiest rock and roll in the 80's. Bar none. And I got one more here. To show. My last one. I hope this didn't take too long. And this is the London. Howlin' Wolf Sessions. Now, I don't have a lot of Howlin' Wolf, and I really dig what I have. So I thought, man, I'm going to get this. It's on Chess Records. Pretty cool gatefold. I'm going to clean it up a little 
with a trick that uh, Dead Wax 66 showed. He uses a white architectural eraser. I always use the pink pearl. That's what we always used in art school. But yeah, pretty cool album cover. There were a series of these. I know there's a Chuck Berry. There's a Muddy Waters. I think there's a Bo Diddley one. And I must say, I didn't... I, I, I don't really care for it that much on first listen. It's got Eric Clapton, Steve Winwood, Bill Wyman, Charlie Watts, and other people. Ian Stewart on piano. Uh, it's too polished. These guys are, I don't know, they're, the musicians are too polished, I think. Too polished sounding. Well, I did a Beatles uh, video years ago, probably a year and a half minimum, <coughs> entitled John Lennon, Paul McCartney Debate. And in that video, I made the statement that I think Ringo was probably the most talented musician in the band. Even though he gets slagged off, technically he he was, I, I, I said, in my opinion, he's the most uh, technical musician of the bunch. And somebody made a comment that, oh, I don't know about that. In fact, a few people did. And one guy even made this, you know, made the comment that Ringo was originally going to do these sessions and he dropped out because he couldn't hack it. They brought Bill Wyman in. Well, Bill Wyman's part of the problem on this album. I think it's the second song. I've only listened to this once. I'll give it more tries. And I think it's Who's Been Talking. What the fuck were they thinking, man? There's this cowbell. And it's prominent. And right here it says, Bill Wyman, no. No, I'm sorry, Bill Wyman. Um, Charlie Watts. Drums, conga. Assorted percussion. Oh, Bill Wyman. It's Bill Wyman that's at fault. I knew it was him. Bill Wyman. Bass guitar, shakers, and cowbell. God damn. So it wasn't the drummer. It's Bill Wyman. What the heck are they thinking with this cowbell? <laughs> Alan Wolf song. I'll give it some more tries, but it, it just... These guys... They weren't gritty on this album. These old white, these white kids, these old young upstarts, they weren't gritty enough for Howlin' Wolf in my mind. And it's on chess. Very cool. I'll give it some more listens. I mean, I'm going to probably keep it. And if I see the Muddy Waters one, I'll probably get it too because I want to get everything by Muddy Waters. And I'll, I'll get more uh, Howlin' Wolf as I find it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Um, it's my birthday Monday, so I got a little birthday money. In fact, I got it today. So I'm probably going to go do a little shopping this weekend. So it won't be long before I have another Vinyl Finds video. And I'm going to start doing those Vinyl Collection ones. I think I know who my next one will, will be. But anyways, that's going to be a secret. Take care. I'm being dumb enough. Dumbass, Pat. Rich. Whatever. Take care, guys and gals.